morning and welcome to Frank's School. <clears throat> Always holding a cat because otherwise the cat will knock my music stand over the camera. Uh, anyway, this is the seventh year, 85th day, first video. Uh, I'm still dealing uh, with uh, sort of debriefing myself and the Hong Kongers as well from their visit of over three weeks uh, in August. Uh, this is not the eighth visit but rather the eighth video devoted to this and it'll be the end uh, I think of the uh, academic part. Uh, I mean, the, the way our days were structured, Sundays were different, but, but really it was six days a week uh, we would have class in the morning. Uh, and I've described how that would go. Uh, but then in the afternoons we would go outside. And I also do want to mention that that whole matter of in the summertime, sometimes called the fine season, to be spending time in an academic situation when everything is so glorious outside is a little questionable to me. I, I mean, in effect, this might have been called a, a, a short version of a summer school. Well, that, that's a little harder, I think. There's something a little less natural about being inside uh, when uh, in the fine season. But in any case, I, what, what I mean by this is then I will turn my attention to outside and what we were doing in the afternoon and, and show you that. Well, uh, Romeo and Juliet was the last story I told them. I said that I had found that storytelling was very effective and they loved stories. And I told the story of Romeo and Juliet. I got to the end of that and King said, you know, you're a good storyteller. Which, which again, I, I appreciate that he said that, but I, I, still, I still question that. But as I said, I, I know the stories and, and this, for example, is such, such a powerful story. But anyway, one of the reasons I did that was to, or the way I followed it up, was I had the, the video, the, the VHS tape, Shakespeare in Love, set right toward the uh, end at the world premiere of uh, Romeo and Juliet. And uh, they took it home and then watched it to the end. And I was able to teach about the literary device of illusion when Queen Elizabeth uh, uh, stepped in the mud. Uh, uh, so, and, and uh, what I had found too, I, at a certain point I decided, can I make it to that far, to Romeo and Juliet, uh, in chronological order? So I basically went from Gilgamesh to Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> that was very brief and very fast. Now, uh, things that are going to come out of this is I intend to write a rule book for competitive sentence diagramming. I was reminded of how much fun uh, that is and how effective it is. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just found myself as I was teaching it, it was just kind of natural to go into that little competitive business of, of uh, seeing who can do it neater and faster and more accurate and stuff. And, and I had, to, uh, earlier I had kind of come up with a whole set of rules in my mind that I, I never wrote it out, but that I would always use. And I think I'll write up a little rule book, like official rules. And I'm in contact with a woman named Elizabeth O'Brien about this. She is, uh, I'm not sure how well known she is. She should be well known, at least among home, homeschooling parents. Uh, <coughs> she has a, <coughs> a website, or a <coughs> I don't know, or it's called Grammar Revolution. If you would, if you would uh, Google Grammar Revolution, you would come to her and she's very enthusiastic about the teaching of grammar. Well, as a result of King's visit, he had found her online, just as he had found me, and uh, I went ahead and contacted her. Uh, again, I mean, I, I had known her, oh, it's been years now, actually, that uh, I didn't know if she would remember me, but she did. And uh, she knows that I'm thinking about doing this, and we're talking about it some. I, I'm ready to do the work, but if she would uh, give it uh, a, a review or, or, or help me out a little bit, <clears throat> that, that's something that could come of this uh, experience. Another thing that probably will come is an annotated list of videos. Uh, <clears throat> those videos that I have, uh, there are 180 school days in, in a school year. And of those, uh, I, I can't say I, I showed 180 clips of videos, but I probably showed 150, and, and I have them. And I think I will make that list, uh, instead of just as I went along teaching, uh, <clears throat> mentioning them, I'll actually set about making the list in order, in the order that I would use them. Uh, I think I'll do that. And, and I, I even thought about 
offering it to Turner Classic Movies, which is a channel uh, available uh, <coughs> on television that's for free. You can see all these classic movies. Well, if they would care, if they all they'd have to do is just I think is just decide to use that order. Uh, but they they could offer quite an amazing service to to a homeschooler or to anybody really if they wanted to get a chronological experience of, of literature <clears throat> and, and uh, the way I, I used it. You know, it's a little tedious to try to find all these videos yourself independently and YouTube only goes so far. You can do that. And I, you know, I'd even thought about is there some way to like publish it as a, <clears throat> a, a collection of videotapes and I get per the permissions. I don't know, but I think I will make the annotated list. That would be fun for me, and try to leave nothing out. And I might approach them or something like it. Finally, approaches to teaching. Well, King had brought his two sons and himself halfway around the planet to be my students. So he had decided that I was a good teacher, and he kept saying <clears throat> that he felt that good. Finding good teachers was absolutely critical. That was what was so hard to do, and he couldn't find them in uh, in Hong Kong. And he, the man is completely devoted. I suggested maybe over devoted to uh, his sons, and I think his daughter too, getting a good education. Well, we have some differences. <clears throat> some differences in our approach to teaching. Uh, one is discipline. I, I my approach to discipline was basically if. That business of you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. If if the interest was not there, uh, or I could not generate it easily, I'd drop it. I, I wasn't going to try to force uh, learning uh, through fear or pain or, or, or whatever. Uh, deprivation, maybe. You know, I'll take this away from you if you won't learn it or something. Maybe, I don't know. But I, I, and when I was teaching in public school, I didn't really have much of an issue with discipline because I kept my course lively enough and I was working with such interesting material that, that basically I had to get the, the severest discipline was, would be to be sent away uh, out of the room uh, and because they were so disrupting uh, the class. That was discipline enough, really, <clears throat> to be removed. Another thing was testing. I, I had no plans to t test. Well, King, he wanted, he wanted me to make sure I gave him a test. And so I did. I mean, I gave him a final test. I, I thought a little bit about Danny DeVito in the, uh, at the end of Renaissance Man, where he says, yep, there's going to be a test uh, <clears throat> to the double Ds. Um, I did give him a test, but my approach to testing, it also back in when I was teaching public school, was my tests were very easy. My tests actually insulted some students because they were so easy, but I was teaching at the same time that I was testing. I was using that, exp that occasion to continue to teach. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd hit on the stuff that I you know, had already taught, but I would continue to teach really, and then the, re <clears throat> uh, the result was often that the answers became so obvious and so easy. Uh, King asked me at the end of that one test that I gave, he says, are, are your tests always that easy? And I said, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's where I am. Uh, <clears throat> and finally, uh, formulaic writing. Now King, see, he had his ideas about what teaching should be like. And, you know, I, had I been hired, uh, engaged in his employ, as a teacher, I you know would have had more of a compulsion to teach it his way, but I wanted to please him. I, I mean, I, I didn't want to dissatisfy him, but nonetheless, I was different. And for the formulaic writing, I just I, I just drew the line on that. I, I I did. He wanted them to write a journal every every day, and, you know, and so uh, that, that's that's okay. I, I I think there's some value in that. And so we uh, set the date. And then I'd give him a little bit of time to write. And he wanted it to be uh, a, basically a topic sentence, and, and then first, second, finally, uh, so that it was structured, as, as you've done so often all through so many schools. And the results you get, you know, as he argued, well, that, that way you get a sequence to the writing. And I, know, I knew that. I could not bring myself to do it. We started that way. 
but what the result was something that was just so formulaic it was like filling out a formula and I eventually you know kind of just decided I got to give them another option and and I told them what the secret of writing good writing uh, was which I continue to believe that, that I, I know the secret and I'll tell you right now the secret is having something to say that's it having something to say if you've got something to say then you can write it it's a slower process than speaking it but you can write it later I added the addendum having someone who will read what you write is helpful but not necessary um, <clears throat> uh, to, for this good writing so many people write not with no assurance that anybody will ever actually read it but they've got something to say and so they write it and so we had various occasions uh, that, that I was sure that they all had something to say and I would get them started in a way with, with a sentence but it was nothing like that formulaic writing I, I had the satisfaction as I was explaining this to a, a, my apprentice I call him Matthew Zubek he was here and I told him about this he said his best uh, English teacher he ever had, 10th uh, grade I think he was in, one of the first things that English teacher told him, this is in public school, is just to forget that, he had a nickname for it, I, I don't know what it was, but to just completely forget that formulaic paragraph stuff, that, that they would not do that for him. Uh, he, he was a good teacher. <clears throat>